Thank you. Just a quick temperature check in the room uh, as you go on talking to. Um, can you put your hands up if you're an academic by profession? Okay. Uh, business? Okay. Public service? Okay. That's fine. Right. So the first thing about DHI is we work with academics, with business, uh, businesses, with health care, charity. We work with everyone, so we're, we're a bit of a melting pot. So I've got about eight different versions of this. <laughs> so, so it's good to have a fairly consolidated group uh, that I can speak to. So what is DHI? I'm, I'm going to rattle through these bits and pieces really quickly because it is quite late in the day and I want to give a little bit of time for questions. Um, so that's usually more useful than me just talking. Um, so uh, we are an innovation centre. Um, we um, are these various organisations um, and uh, our basic purpose is to stimulate digital health and innovation. And we have uh, some funding and some facilitation capabilities to help take an idea through prototyping into an actual product and get it tested in a live environment. So we're working on the springboard, that little thing that you've been talking about for ages, but you haven't had people to help you get off the ground. That's our problems. Um, as I've already, already described, um, we, we kind of work with everyone, um, uh, which brings up some challenges. So you may see some language uh, on, in the presentation you don't quite understand, but that's because it's a kind of <coughs> aggregation of all these different uh, cultures and things that we have to work with. So we've got to try and find ways of speaking to everyone at the same time. Um, that includes uh, citizens. Um, so quite a lot of the way our uh, innovation model works is to make sure that we're meeting needs. Um, effectively, we want to do something if we can't demonstrate an actual local use case um, you know, that, that lines up with that system need or, or, or professional need. So, um, again, uh, we uh, you know, work with these very various different, different groups. Um, we do have facilities, um, so we have some uh, physical locations that we can uh, offer incubation kind of capabilities, mainly for businesses. Uh, we can host workshops, uh, you know, we have a kind of infrastructure would need to, to start tackling some of those difficult discussions you need to have to get going. So we're a place as well as a people, um, so bear that in mind. Um, and we have an active membership of around 800 uh, members from academia, business and public services, uh, and a website that is sort of replete with uh, lots of guides, projects, and other bits and pieces that you can have a look at just to understand a bit more of what we can do for you. Um, I'm just going to play a very quick... Uh, Video? Yes. Yeah. We're here to help bring innovative ideas to life that will have a positive impact on health and care in the future. We're all living longer. Our lifestyles are changing and innovative technology is said to play an increasingly important role in our lives. So now is the time to look at new opportunities that will provide smarter, more effective and more efficient ways of delivering health and care services. By bringing partners from the worlds of healthcare, charity, academia, design, technology and business together with patients and users of services, we're creating a community of like-minded people today that will effectively develop the health and care services we rely on tomorrow. There are three key elements to the support we provide through our innovation model. Our exploratory activities help to stimulate ideas by looking at the current landscape and evaluating priorities. Our laboratory activities provide a suitable environment for collaborators to quickly prototype and trial new ideas. And our factory activities help to take an idea into the real world with access to test environments, business mentoring and funding advice. We're open to all kinds of proposals from healthcare professionals, businesses and especially members of the public. So, if you have an idea that could change the world of healthcare tomorrow, find out more about how we can help by visiting dhi-scotland.com today. And let's write the future together. So I'll talk a little bit more about, uh, about some of those, those bits and pieces um, we mentioned there, but that just gives you a kind of flavor of what we're about. You'll see quite a lot of uh, devices and measurements and things like that. So most of what we trade in um, is uh, around you know, quantified self, around the fact that we can now, through the things, kind of capabilities, measure almost everything. And so how can we kind of harness uh, as much of that as possible for, for, for delivery of service? 
So, we are an innovation center. Um, uh, I'm going to rattle through this very quickly. Uh, our, our purpose, core purpose, is to uh, use academic money to bring knowledge out of academia about how to evaluate <coughs> and improve upon uh, technologies and care models, um, uh, you know, use the latest sort of uh, knowledge in that space, um, uh, but for the purpose of ultimately Scottish economic development. So, it's like what you were describing earlier, which is um, instead of just doing it once for your patch, um, you should, we, we, we could be thinking more in terms of how can we tap into industry capabilities, the private sector capabilities to say, instead of making an app, an app or something in-house for a thousand users, you know, uh, think more about uh, would someone else buy that app in another healthcare system elsewhere, in which case we can push a lot of the um, support and uh, ongoing technical development for that thing to the private sector. Um, and they can effectively make money of that, or have that internationally. Um, and we, the DHI, will help you contract with those people to make sure you get it free. If you, if you get the drift, so we can get someone else to pay for it um, through that economic development model, um, so you have a more sustainable technology support platform, if you like. Okay. Um, there are many other innovation centers. Um, uh, we have Data Lab, uh, which focuses on that data piece that you were speaking about. Um, we have oil and gas and various other bits and pieces. Uh, DHI's focus is health and care. So in the innovation landscape, in the Scottish government's view of how innovation should work in Scotland, if you're in health and care, then we're the, we're, we're the first port call for the interest in the market in that kind of world. So, um, what is digital health and care? Um, you will have uh, reference to telehealth, telecare, e-health, various other bits and pieces. There are a huge number of competing and confusing terms in this space. Uh, and recently, the, the trend seems to be that digital health is coming to encapsulate practically any kind of technology-supported uh, health and care delivery. Uh, there's almost nothing uh, of, the, of the jargon that has popped up over the last decade that could not be conceived of as part of that digital health and care landscape. And that's not just a Scottish thing, that's a global uh, you know, emerging definition, if you like. Um, so, in response to your consultation, uh, if there is a, a, a focus on improving telehealth and telecare, I would suggest that we broaden that out and say, you know, a broader focus on technology-enabled care or digital health, just to, just to make sure, because telehealth and telecare is a very specific set of <laughs> That's my response. Um, uh, this, this, this is made a slide for, for anyone not from around here, but basically since Scotland is open for business, part of the whole innovation center thing is we are trying to effectively say come and bring your new technologies and ideas here. So a large part of what we do is if you see something abroad that you like that is working in another healthcare system you want to bring here, that's a great thing to bring to us, especially if it's technology related because um, we want to try and attract the investment for the economic side. So it suits us and we can facilitate bringing in that kind of capability. So again, another thing. Um, we have um, an innovation model that you sort of saw in those in those um, in that video very briefly. Um, it's three parts. So we've got the exploratory, which is effectively um, a kind of a team of researchers and uh, workshop facilitators who will help you take whatever the challenge is, um, especially if it's a complex one. Um, if it's something that's beyond your ability to manifest a solution for on your own, yeah, it's a, a wicked problem. You know, something a bit sticky and you're not quite sure what to do with it. We can help tease out. A couple of potential route forwards, routes forward, and we'll do that by bringing in people from the other sectors who we know have a role to play in a, in a solution in that space, and you know, we'll network you and facilitate towards a slightly more focused, um, really a focused research question, i.e. what are you trying to establish will or won't work, and we can help you get there. Once we know what that question is, um, we've got our experience laboratory in that space. And so don't be, put off, don't be thrown by the, the, the term lab. This is this is a, a, a co-design environment. So this is where we uh, bring members of the public, uh, uh, staff, um, unpaid carers, you know, whoever it may be that is affected by uh, that particular care, care journey. Um, we've got a team of uh, 15 product designers and uh, service designers who, as a profession, tease out from people what they want and need. Um, uh, and then help them to uh, co-create what the ideal or future service might, might, might be. Uh, so we are very you know, um, professionally equipped <laughs> and funded and resourced uh, uh, facility there. And uh, if, you bring, if you bring a proposal to us and we approve it, it's something we want to work with, then that's a free 
you know, support service if you like, if you like. And then finally, once uh, so, that, so that that lab space will finish by giving you what we call a concept prototype, which is wireframes, screen one, screen two, screen three. If you press this button, this happens. You know, it kind of it, it makes the thing, whatever it might be, into a slightly more real thing that you can sort of you know, understand. Um, so in some cases, depending on the type of technology, they might mock something up for you. So do it on a screen so it works as a sort of mock prototype on your phone so you can hand it to people and get them to play with it and use that as part of your engagement to get more interest in the idea. Um, so, uh, and then, and then um, there's a photographer and a videographer on hand to capture that engagement process, that co-design process. So there's always a good story to tell when you're involving patients in the, or, or citizens or carers or professionals in that way. So you get a kind of collateral package at the other end of that lab that says, look at what you've done to bring out the needs in the community you're trying to serve, and look at how you manage to turn it into something that you can play with. It's not quite a product yet, but it's you know it's something tangible. Then what we find is people then need to go away, and talk to their boards or funders or anyone else, and sort of say, right, okay, look look what we've done. You know, how do we make this? A, uh, you know, how do you take this to the next step? Typically, at that stage, someone's going to have to make it, make a production grade, reliable, robust piece of technology that you know you, you feel safe in using. And that's typically where the DHI would say it would point to 300 Scottish businesses that are all digital developers that can do this sort of thing. And we would be trying to get them involved in your project if you were if you wanted support that way, subject to procurement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we, we have two uh, ex-national procurement people from NHS Scotland, so we know very well how to, how to handle that procurement environment. So don't worry too much about that. Um, factory is where it would go once we have the, 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 the tangible thing built. Uh, and that's where we effectively, this is a gross simplification, um, pay an academic to evaluate the product that you've created in the field. Which is to say, does it work? Is it safe? Is it accurate? If you were to do this across more instances, more ge geographies, what would be the win in terms of patient outcome, or scale of cost savings, or whatever whatever your metric might be? Uh, and we can tap and leverage academic objectivity uh, to help you set the project up right in the first place, which is to say, make the right things from the beginning, so that when you put in place your intervention, you can objectively say, did this add value? And if you can, then what you've got is through the different stages, you've had your exploratory, which says the system needs this, and this is a question that is valid, and that people will recognize the problem. The users involved have helped create that, the, the response to that challenge, and then you have an objective uh, evaluation that says, this adds value in the following ways. And that's effectively your, effectively your, your business case or your case for adoption. Okay? And so our whole purpose here is to try and create new things, but not just new technology. We could pump our technology at a huge rate if we wanted to. Um, we're trying to create adoptable technologies. So it's not just, here, have a play with this. It's have a play with this. Oh, by the way, here's you know, all the credentials it has that says we should be using this at scale. So that's our. That's our basic innovation. Just because I'm a bit, I'm not going to skip that, that video. It's basically just a product, product demonstration. You can see it on our, you can see tons of stuff. Uh, probably have 10 product demos on our website, but because I'm a bit short on time, I'm just going to give you a couple of <coughs> verbal examples. So, um, Nestus uh, is a uh, small, young company that came to us that effectively said that they were uh, personally, based on their own. Um, parents and their own journeys um, were very dissatisfied with typical telecare uh, approaches uh, based on uh, analog systems. Um, they named in very disparaging, disparaging term, to, to terms a couple of the very large incumbent technology providers in the telecare space um, who kind of have captured the market and don't necessarily have the impetus to innovate mm -hmm. right, you know, as swiftly as they, they could. Um, these guys effectively uh, co-created um, a device that uses sound in the home to pattern what all the different interactions you would expect someone to go through and what they look like and what the, the computer can learn, what that sounds like. So the window in the bedroom has just been open. The window in the bedroom has just been closed. Uh, the front door is open, but you know, a picture using sound effectively to collect that kind of data. Then that one thing connected to a wireless, you know, wireless uh, infrastructure um, replaces potentially 200 sensors attached to doors and kettles here, here, there, everywhere, each one needing batteries or connection to power, each one needing maintenance, da, 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 da. 
uh, and each one intruding fundamentally because with the best will in the world, it's still probably going to be a fairly ugly gray box that's sat here and a blinking light there and just a constant reminder that you're being watched. <laughs> um, uh, and so this is, so that their whole philosophy is around uh, um, less intrusive ways of making feel people, make, making people more safe and independent in their own home. So we ran experience labs with them um, that um, actually identified that the best way to introduce something like that is not to go to people who are in need of these services now, but to go to people who are who will be in need of these services in five to ten years' time and offer them a more constructive, uh, self-referring uh, way of beginning this journey, which is to say getting a very low-level, very unintrusive, uh, proactive thing that they choose to implement themselves in their own home. Um, and then at some stage in the future, when they feel like they need someone uh, to be on the other end of a data feed that comes out of that thing, that can go to a family member, or it can go to a charity, or it can go to a statutory service through a call centre and through the normal route with an alarm and all the rest of it. But the point is, that's how you start to disentangle that person-centred approach to the problem. It's not just the state <coughs> should be monitored so that you're safe. It's you have decided you want to monitor yourself, and then at a certain point you will share with people that you depend, you, you trust, a, a means by which they can help you. So as a philosophy, these guys are right on the money, uh, and so we're trying to push them quite hard. In incidentally, they're looking for people that they can test this with. So that's the stage of their map, so if anyone's interested, interested in that, um, we're looking for housing association or another kind of homely setting at scale that we can help them uh, play. Two more, two more, so I'll just very quickly whistle through them. Um, this is a slightly more medical uh, ball test. So this is an app um, that we've helped develop and it's currently trialling in uh, Lanarkshire. Um, and it's effectively a smartphone-based app. You take a photo of your wall, um, it sends that uh, to a be compared. Again, big data would be the term here. If you, when you compare that picture of a mall to the 10,000 pictures of malls and associated outcomes in dermatology clinic in Lanarkshire, uh, then the computer can be taught to say, actually, this is 99% but you know, chance of being benign, which the better predictor than a GP would be, you know, would, would be the contest. <laughs> you know, a lot of people, there's a lot of opinion on either side of that one. However, it's not meant to replace a GP, it's meant to offer a decision support tool to that GP. So instead of that person being referred to a dermatology service, the GP can get a sense of uh, security in their own decision making by saying, actually, you know, the algorithms and 10,000 prior cases tell me that I'm right. So if you picture that kind of that kind of thing, we're going to be very careful when we do these sorts of things because um, it would be very tempting to release that into the public to get people to sell screen. Uh, and if we were purely trying to help a business, you know, uh, create a model that would sell well internationally, we could do that. Um, but this is where DHI is very well networked into helping care services. We understand the implications of saying to people, "You've got 98 percent chance that that's not a uh, tumor." <coughs> All they'll hear is that's. 2% chance to see as tumor. So, so, so that if handled in the wrong way, this could burden the services rather than uh, help them. So it's just about making sure that you have the model for care, not just the technology. So anyway, so that's in our factory at the moment. Uh, uh, so that's in that live testing phase. Uh, and in, you know, in the next three or four months that will complete, we'll have the evaluation of was it you know, accurate enough to be used? Um, and then we'll, we'll see from there. Uh, so the last one I'm going to talk about is um, atrial fibrillation, so uh, I, by no means a cardiac specialist, but um, from my understanding there are about 30,000 undiagnosed cases of atrial fibrillation uh, in Scotland um, at any given time, um, and uh, undiagnosed, so this, uh, forgive my lack of clinical knowledge, effectively a regular heart issues. Um, if you have that, then you are six times more likely to have a stroke than the average. Um, so, uh, at the moment, uh, I'm, my, my wife has actually been through this. Uh, uh, you go in to say, I've had a palpitation. And they say, OK, uh, show me. Can't. So you go back and forth and go to your GP three or four times. And you know, you, you, you get worse and worse and worse until you get to a certain stage where they give you a set of machinery that you hook yourself up to and stick lots of things to you. You spend a week with this stuff stuck to you sleeping in the bath, in the shower, whatever it might be. Um, and it works, you know. Uh, but again, it's a very medical, very intrusive way of trying to detect this sort of thing. 
So the live call system that we, uh, we're testing uh, again at the moment is a little clip you put on the back of your phone, you download the app, and you can do a two-lead ECG, uh, so like electrocardiogram, so get your, 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 your heart rate uh, on the phone. Um, and we're just trying to demonstrate that it is as good as the 12 lead ECG they would take in a, in a hospital. Right? We know it is uh, because we've gone further enough, far, far enough along the lines of the study that we know it works, but we need to get to a certain number of yeses before we can say that with, with any confidence. Um, what that means is, again, um, the company's already started selling it straight to consumers, so you can find this on Amazon now. Um, we're a little bit wary of that again because give someone the ability to, to sell screen and you know what's that look like we're, we're, we're this is currently in 20 G, gp practices and we're trying to again go for the idea of when you go into your gp talk about the infrastructure that is, we should be taken as given if you go to your gp you should be spending 20 seconds with your fingers on, 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 you know, on a pad if that will save you in the future and you can go to into cardiology services and going through a huge amount of disruption um, when that could be easily prevented many years previously so very easy screening win, and it costs 70 pounds for the unit. So if nothing but a receptionist get you to do it when you're signing in to the GP, one, one, one device per GP for the entire year, for the it's an incredibly small investment compared to yeah, what it could be. Um, and that's, uh, that's us.